G'day YouTube, Tom here in the Purpose Built Moto Garage. This is your quick reference guide for installing a black box, accessories kit, and the handlebar switch buttons. We've got an XT500 here, and we're gonna take you through the connection of the black box with the accessories kit into your custom wiring loom. And with this, you want to make sure that you leave, again, the same as we did at the front connection, enough length that if you need to change the connection or something, that you have room enough on the cable to do so. There are, so with our indicators and headlight hooked up, now we go ahead and hook up our switches here. So with my lights and switches hooked up now. I like to do the kill and start button. So I'll run you through that. On this bike, the XT500, the kill switch just needs to be grounded out. So we've upgraded this bike with a performance CDI and 12 volt upgrade system, um, but it still retains the same kill switch. So basically you use the handlebar switch, which switches to ground and connect that straight to your kill switch wire. Now, usually an XT500 doesn't have an electric start, but this one does. So your starter button can get linked up. So this is running to our handlebar switch. This cable here, runs down to our starter solenoid. You don't have to worry about running it through the black box, which is why we don't include a circuit within the box that does your starter. So the cables that I've got here, and I'll flash up a little uh, graphic on the screen that shows you the circuit that we provide to link up your kill switch, uh, that which is where you would use these. So, those are gonna be unused, so I'll heat shrink those, and then those will just get terminated into the electric tray here. So the last few things that I'm cooking up here are the accessories power, which runs power to our horn, uh, that's the power to our brake light switches, and also the power for the uh, speedo and dash lights at the front. So just connected that up here. Um, and the final thing that we have to do in terms of our lighting is connect up our brake light splitter. So that'll include the two brake switches um, and the running light that goes through a splitter and then into our brake light. All right, so I've just finished up doing our last connections. We've got our earth connected. The charging system and ignition system is finished. Um, and now it's time to run through a few tests before we put power to the black box. So the first check that we want to do here is check your grounding through the whole bike. So this is a really key point that I tell a lot of people always when I'm finding problems on old bikes is that their grounding's not good enough. So connect one side of your multimeter to the battery ground and then go through all of your frame grounding points. So we've got Really low readings are what we're looking for. You don't want anything over two ohms. If it's over two ohms, you need to go check your grounding again. So got grounding everywhere that it should be. So now with that checked, we can move on to our next test. The next check is making sure that you don't have an earth anywhere there shouldn't be one. So checking through on your positive circuits from a terminal strip. So you shouldn't get any readings through here. So that test has shown everything's sweet. The one thing that you will find is if you have uh, an incandescent 
tail light or headlight, you will get a ground connection, but you shouldn't read zero. It should read the uh, the resistance of the of the lamp, which might be six ohms or, or something like that. But aside from that, you shouldn't have earth anywhere on your terminal strip, especially if you're running LEDs. Next check that we go through here is making that making sure that our buttons are switching when they are pressed. So as we've gone through, we've got our, our switch buttons along here. Now we just need to check that the right button is doing the right thing. So these all these should all switch to ground. So we'll start with our headlight button. We'll get a connection there. This one will be our right indicator. So we get a connection there. Left indicator. Kill switch. and the starter button. Sweet, so that's all six buttons uh, correctly tested. So now we're starting to look at um, putting power onto the bike and adding the fuses and making sure that these fuses are protected the right thing. So at this point in the test, you wanna make sure that you pull your fuses out. So take that, that's our accessories fuse. And then we have our black box fuse. So what we want to check here is that we have a connection from our battery to the incoming side of our switching coil or your key, which is there. And then this battery lead should not be connected to anywhere else in our system because the relay is currently off. Now we need to check our fuse on the outgoing side goes to our accessories and it does but it doesn't feed our black box so if you had a connection from here and you also had a connection here you know that you've got a cross wire somewhere and this fuse will be feeding your black box as well so with that done we can pretty confidently apply power to our bike and fire this thing up so what you want to do is apply one fuse at a time so that will be our accessories fuse that we'll chest, test first. Now we switch our key off the front here and then I'll connect the battery. Okay, so with our battery connected now, key is off. We set our multimeter to volts DC. Check that we have voltage to the inside of our coil switch. And then we have voltage to our inside on the key is correct so our key switch up the front as i mentioned before we're using a mini key which makes us uh we you know we have the need to use a relay but you can just use your factory key to switch and you, you remove the need for a relay so uh that tells us that we should be able to switch this on now so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pop this accessories fuse out turn this on we hear the black box click um, that says it's ready to go and now we check our connection to ground here to make sure we have 12 volts on the right side of our fuse. We have 12 volts going to our black box now, which is correct. And then I just do these one at a time. So we'll pop our accessories in. We should see our, let me try and get you here. So our dash is fired up, which is good. And we should have a tail light, which is also good. So now we can chuck our fuse into the black box. This always turn the power off again when I do that. So pop that in there. Now we can fire it up and the rest of our lights should work too, which we do. So we've had the dash fire up, got our low beams working. Check our indicators now. Guys, testing through your system is one of the most important things. I have so many guys make mistakes on wiring. They just turn the key and it ends up really messing up their system where you burn out one of your lights or something. So just take five minutes to do these checks and it almost foolproofs you in making sure that you can get your system correct. Now that we know that we have all of our functions working, um, I can go through and check that we have spark. 
I can go through and check that the kill switch is doing its job. So, I mean, on this one, we'll just jump on the Kickstarter, make sure that the, uh, the spark kills. And now that I know that this works, I can tidy up my cabling. The last little bit that I normally do is use our cover here, pop that on. And then while it's fresh in your mind, label all of these. So it'll be accessories power, black box power, left, right, high beam, low beam, all that stuff. So that way, if ever you take your seat off, you know wh what's going on where, and you can get out of straight away. So you have your accessories, circuit, black box, your lighting here, switches there, and then you've got the starter button and kill switch on the end here with a spare terminal. Accessories fuse, key relay, and your black box fuse. And your all important grounding connection. Now we've wrapped up the black box install, you should have all the information you need to apply the install of these products onto your motorcycle. If you do have any more questions or you need to reference any diagrams, make sure you check out purposebuiltmoto.com. We've got a lot of blogs and stuff that we'll link below in the video notes.